Right, so the advantages of monetary policy. Number one is that it can be quickly altered. As compared to uh, as compared to fiscal policy, monetary policy can be quickly altered. It offers speed and flexibility. Say so, yeah, the results uh, are generated quickly. Then uh, it's more let's call it politically correct politically correct yeah so fiscal pol in, uh, in fiscal policy uh, the government expenditure and tax rates uh, are changed right and these changes have extensive political effects but monetary policy is isolated from political pressure which makes it more subtle and more politically correct than fiscal policy so these were uh, very few advantages. The disadvantages, um, let's the disadvantages. The one disadvantage is that when we make use of easy money policy. Uh, a bank, the bank's ability to lend increases, right? But there is still no guarantee that these la that these loans will actually be negotiated. That's one. The other one is, uh, is connected with MV equals to PT, the Fisher's equation. So, um, in a, during an easy money policy, easy money policy, the money supply rises, leading to a fall in interest rates and this leads to the demand for specul speculative demand for money to rise this means that more money is held as idle balance in the form of cash this means that more money moves from hand to hand uh, uh, le um, sorry this means that uh, less transactions are now taking place and more money is now uh, held in drawers and vaults this means that the money velocity falls and if we do a short example let's say the money supply is 150 and let's say the velocity was 4 right so this means that PT is MV and 150 into 4 600 this is the nominal GDP but because velocity is 3 this has led to PT to fall by minus 50 resulting in the nominal GDP to fall and this turns out to be 450 this means that the policy easy money policy has been limited by the reduction in uh, money velocity the, velo the money velocity so this is another form of crowding out also say a tight money um, policy is being used by the central bank which means that interest rates have risen implying that investment has fallen but let's say um, there is um, there sorry there are high uh, business expectations there is business optimism there is technological progress and ex or and the expectations of capital equipment and the expectations from the benefit that, that the, there that there will be greater benefits from capital expenditure um, have uh, have risen this means that investment will actually rise because of higher business expectations and this rise um, in investment will offset the reduction in investment because of which the tight money policy was used on the other hand say an easy money policy was used interest rates fell investments rose but let's say the uh, an economy is going through recession and 
And then recession severely undermines business confidence. So if people do not really expect their profitability to rise in the future, they will not invest and they will not invest in capital expenditure, which means that investments will actually continue to fall. And this fall will offset the rise in investments. Also, if we show the impact of um, monetary policy using aggregate demand and aggregate supply, let's say this is the aggregate supply curve let's say this is the current aggregate demand curve so if an easy money policy is used easy money policy is used this will lead to a rise in interest rates a rise in investments a rise in aggregate expenditure and a rise in equilibrium income. So if we show the impact on the curve aggregate demand will shift outwards right and if we take a look at the rise in the price levels the price levels will rise by little not, not extensively So the thing is that this rise uh, in market sub in sorry the rise in money supply will permit con uh, consumers, firms, and government to purchase a larger real output with a small increase in price levels. This means that an economy should be in a recessionary range of aggregate supply for easy money policy to have a large impact on real output employment with very little effect on price levels. On the other hand. Say if your economy was operating over here, let's call this AD2, right? If an economy was, the, so economy is already near Y star, it's already near the optimal level of production. So what will happen is, let's say, again, an easy money policy is used and your aggregate demand shifts outwards. So if we take a look at the changes, this was your, let's call this price level 2. And let's call this price level 3. So we can see that there is little impact on real output. But however, the impact on the price level is large. There is a larger impact on the price level. The price levels rose by a larger amount um, as compared to the change in output, in real output. This means that over here, easy money policy is highly inflationary, right? So if your economy is near Y star, this implies that easy money policy is highly inflationary. So these were the advantages and disadvantages of monetary policy. In the next video we'll talk about um, the liquidity trap and why it hinders the monetary sub policy to make an impact on aggregate demand.